Let's catch up with Scott Marcus of Slim Pictures, who wrote the greatest book ever written by any person, ever. With a major emphasis in film, Scott Marcus started looking into Chicago ghost stories and was immediately sucked into the world of the paranormal. Now that I had all this information, I wanted to do a little something with it, so I put together a documentary. Once I did the documentary, you know, we were able to go into Bachelor's Grove and Resurrection Cemetery and tell some of these really famous uh, ghost stories that Chicago is known for. But there were so many more that we just didn't have time to cover in a video documentary. So that's when the book came about. The book is Voices from the Chicago Grave and covers nearly a hundred haunted locations from all over Chicagoland. Mary Sirwinski and I, we put it together and we're very excited about it because, uh, well, for many reasons, but including that it comes with a CD-ROM, which contains over 1,100 different pictures of these haunted locations, all originals, uh, stuff that you haven't seen anywhere else. It also has a couple dozen video clips on it. And kind of the idea was someone can buy the book, read the book, and by using the CD-ROM also, really get the impression of this place, really get the idea of what it feels like to actually visit there without having to actually go through the experience of being there. The whole experience continues because we've kept the website up to date with updates on the stories as, as we learn new things. Either new information comes to us or uh, the location itself goes through a change, it's been altered, it's been demolished, so on, so on. And that was, uh, you know, it's kind of a scary thing when you write a book that it's kind of a, a snapshot in time. And if anything new happens from there, it's not in the book and you, you kind of feel like you haven't put the best product out there because suddenly it's out of date maybe as soon as you printed it. So we've uh, been very happy to be able to continue it for our readers on the website and the website also contains user submitted stories. People that have read the book, people that haven't read the book but they've found us on YouTube or MySpace or just by uh, doing an internet search for Chicago Ghost Stories where they have been able to ask questions and submit their own stories and get responses from Mary Sirwinski or myself. And we're not just talking message boards here either. From time to time, Scott and I will actually go out and make a video in response to questions or stories that get submitted to us on the web. Yep. And that's where we're coming to you from right now. This is the house on Rainbow Road as of October 1st, 2006. A lot different from the last time we were here Definitely. a couple of years ago. This is where the house was, just judging based on the flagpole that stands behind us. Yeah, and the flagpole is pretty much, there's the flagpole and across the street is the mailbox. And, and the silo. And there's a the silo, and that's the only original, uh, that yeah. anything that we can recognize from San We never went out with the intention, we're, we're, we're going to find a ghost, we're going to prove ghosts exist, we're going to get uh, photographic evidence or video evidence. But we always did have cameras with us. And Mary and I, we both have the background in journalism, where we were just going to go out there as impartial as humanly possible and do the interviews, visit the places ourselves and take the pictures and, and really cover the story as best we could. Now, not often, but certainly a handful of times, we did come across different paranormal events. Over the course of creating the book and documentary, the team had unexplained experiences at Robinson Woods, on Cuba Road, the Excalibur, the Willowbrook Ballroom, Chet's Melody Lounge, Archer Woods Cemetery, the Red Lion Pub, the Stickney House, Holy Sepulchre Cemetery, and Bachelor's Grove. Not bad, considering we weren't looking for something to happen. Perhaps the most harrowing location was known as the Sunnybrook Asylum. By far the scariest place I'd ever been in my life. And you can see all of it basically in the documentary, very unfiltered of how scared we were at the time of shooting. The, the story was that this place was an asylum, which that's actually still unproven. We have not found uh, hard evidence of that. But the, the urban legend is that this was an asylum, that there was a, uh, a massacre there, and the place has been abandoned and just left to time. And of course that sounds preposterous. It sounds like your typical urban legend fodder. But we did have credible witnesses that came forth and said that they had heard screams coming from that area and that they actually would hear the sound of crying coming from the room that they were standing in. So we thought, well, this, if nothing else is worth visiting, maybe we'll just throw it away. We went and there's something that was going on back there. There's no doubt. Whatever the place was, uh, it was haunted. 
the place was highly vandalized, which added to the creepy effect. Something that went on pretty quickly was we'd be walking along and there were three of us, myself being in the back, and I would always hear another person behind me walking through the grass with me. Uh, so <laughs> you'll see in the documentary, I'm constantly turning around with my camera to see what the heck's behind me. To find out more about the book, please check out slimpictures.com and feel free to submit your own stories, pictures, and questions.